Hi friends, it's Becky and I had some inspiration smack me inside the head last night and I just decided that I was going to figure out how to make a sunflower using these beads that came in the April uh, Beads of the Month Seed Bead and Two Hole Bead Club because I just got them and <laughs> I looked at them and the first thing I thought of was, yep, that's lemon and lime. And then the second thing I thought of was sunflowers. So I am going to show you how to turn these into this. And we'll do that in this tutorial. I'm just gonna do the motif in this tutorial. And I will also show you how to attach a, um, just a wire guardian like this to the top of it to turn it into some earrings because these are gonna be my earrings every day, earrings for today. So I'm gonna make these with y'all. And then I'm gonna do a second um, video showing how to do turn this into a necklace and another video showing you how to make it into a bracelet because I think connecting these together would be fantastic for a bracelet and I know how to do it, um, but this would end up being a really, really long video if we did that. And if you just wanted to know how to turn it into a, um, a bracelet, then having to sit through doing a necklace and some earrings and all that at the same time would be a lot. So that way you can watch this part to learn how to make this and then watch the next video to learn how to make it into a necklace, and then the next video to do a, um, a bracelet. And I actually am thinking of maybe using some of my other colors of Super Duos and doing like a multicolor flower bracelet. I think that would be really cool. But today we're gonna make sunflowers. So let's gather up the things that we're gonna be doing that with. We've got some of these yellow luster Super Duos. And you're going to need, for each motif, um, you'll need 36 of those super duos. So for two earrings, I would need 72 total for spread across both earrings. And then you'll need one of these two hole cabochons. And these are, let me see what size cabochons, because I know that there's two different sizes of two hole cabochons out there. And it looks like this one is the seven millimeter. So it's a seven millimeter two hole cabochon. And you just need one of those for each motif that you make. And then you need nine gem duos. So I've got 10 here just in case one of them goes walkabout, but there's more in that box. And then you'll need some 110 seed beads. And I'm gonna be using two different colors. You can do it with just one color if you want. I'm gonna be using the Sturcoat um, champagne color for the center of my flower. And then just little highlights with this other green around the outside of the edge. And I'm gonna show you kind of two ways to make it. I, I made and remade this several times, by the way, while I was figuring out how to make it work for me. So <laughs> it's 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 gonna be pretty, pretty fun to do this together. You're gonna want a thread that gives you some structure. So something that, um, you can make multiple passes through these beads, but something that as you do those multiple passes, it will snug things up a little bit. And so I'm going to be using some six pound fire line for that. That is 0 .06, 0 0.06 inch uh, beading thread. So some wildfire would also do well for that. Um, I would suggest something that was um, you know, loose and drapey because you do want to have some structure with what you're making. So I've gone ahead and threaded my needle with some fire line and I'm using a little bit more than an arm's length of, of the, the thread. Um, something that you're comfortable using or doing with. Um, to measure out an arm's length, you would grab one end of your thread in one hand and then the spool with the other and just extend your arm out and hold this spool up to your chest. If you hold it over to your shoulder, you'll get a little bit more than just an, an arm's length. Um, you could do a full wingspan, but you're going to have some thread left at the other at the end if you do it that way. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can always add more thread as you go if you need to as well. All right, so to start off with, we've got our thread, we've got our seed beads. There's two different versions of 11 no seed beads, the cabochon, the gem duos, and the 
super duos and I'm just going to grab one of my center color color A 11 O's and put it down fairly close to the end of the thread. I want to give myself enough room that I can thread this onto a needle and weave it into my work at the end of this. So I'm going to leave about maybe four or five inches and then right here at the end I'm going to go through my seed bead once so that the thread wraps around it like a loop. That's going to be my little stop bead. This is also going to be part of the design, so we're not going to be removing it later. And I'm going to start with my cabochon. And I'm going to go through one of the holes in this cabochon. And at this point, it doesn't matter which hole you go through. Just go through one of them. All right, so now we've got our little stop bead at the bottom of our cabochon and we've got our thread coming out of one of the holes in this cabochon over here. I'm gonna pick up three 11 seed beads, that same color, the first inner color. We're not gonna to get to that green color until a little bit later and I'll tell you when. So I've got these three on here and I'm going to go from this hole, let's auto focus a little bit better, this hole here over to this one just gonna bridge that gap. You know what I think I might do? I think I might scooch this camera in a little bit so you can see these tiny beads a little bit better. There we go. I'm just gonna pull the thread a little bit to stump that up. So I've got those three beads at the top. I've got my one bead at the bottom. I'm gonna pick up two more 11 o seed beads again that inner first color. And where this seed bead is sitting, I'm gonna go right in the top of it, like that, and then out the side. And hold on to my other thread just with my fingers while I snug this up. So now I've got three on one side and three on another. I'm gonna pick up five seed beads Again, that same color A seed bead. We've got five of those on my needle. And then I'm going to sew through all three of these. And because of the curve, you might not be able to angle your um, needle through all three of them at the same time. So it's okay to do them like a couple at a time. As long as you end up exiting out of that third seed bead in the row there. Give that a little bit of a snug and I'm going to pick up five more seed beads and go through these three beads down here. One, two, three, four, five and again it's that same color seed bead, that color A. And again because of the curve you may not be able to go through all three of those seed beads at the same time. Is perfectly okay. So one, two, three. So that's number three right there. That's the first seed bead we had added. That's the one that we had as the uh, the stop bead. So we're right back to where we started. All right. And so from here, I'm just going to go two beads away from there and come out of one of these seed beads. You can go three beads away. You can go four beads away doesn't super matter. Um, I don't know if I would go all the way around and tighten it up. You can if you want, but I think it's probably going to be tight enough the way it is. So we've got our thread coming out of this bead and I'm going to attach a right angle weave unit using some seed beads and a super duo to this one bead that I'm coming out of. So I'm going to pick up one 11 -0 seed bead one super duo and one 11 -0 seed bead like that and now I'm coming out of this side of the seed bead I'm going to go into the other side of that seed bead and right out of it like this 
and that's attached my little right angle weave unit right onto this loop. And then I'm going to skip this bead that's right next to it by sewing through it and then come out of the bead right after that. So this is going to be real loose and that's okay, but I'm coming out of this bead now. I'm going to do another right angle weave unit on this, but this 11-0 here is going to be one of the beads in that right angle weave unit. So I'm going to pick up one 11-0 seed bead, one super duo, and then I'm going to sew down into the top of this seed bead that I had just added. So let me go down into that one. I'm just doing these uh, sort of in separate motions because I want to make it easier for you to see everything that I'm doing with it. So I sewed into this one that was already also attached to this other Super Duo. And now I'm gonna go right directly into that 11-0 that I originally was coming out of for this second right angle weave unit. Giving that a little bit of a tug. I'm going to do that another time. Again, it's fine if they're floppy. We're going to be tightening things up as we add more things to it. So I'm going to do that again by skipping the next seed bead after the one I just attached it to by sewing through it and then coming out of the seed bead right after that. So let me do that a little bit faster with going through more of these seed beads instead of one seed bead at a time. I'm going to pick up one 11-0, one Super Duo, and I already have that both of the other two 11-0s for this right angle weave unit on here. So I'm going to go into this one that's kind of horizontal, and I'm just going to go right into, without stopping, that same seed bead that I was coming out of and I can even if I angle this right go through that next bead that's next to it too that's just gonna make it a little bit faster and a little bit easier all right so now I'm ready to do my next one I was just that one that you go through I want to be coming out of the one that's two beads away from that. So if my Super Duo is sitting above this one, I want to be coming out of the one that's two, two beads away from it. Now there is going to become a point in time when you're doing this where the circumference of the circle, it increases the further you go out from the middle of it. It's just geometry, that's how it works. And so at some point as you're doing this, there's gonna be a lot more room between each of these than or there are between each of these. And so you're going to need to um, make one adjustment one time. And I'll show you what that looks like and how to make that adjustment. Um, but for now, when you still can go right from this one to the, uh, the bead that you're coming out of, you're gonna want to go ahead and continue doing this same thing where you pick up one seed bead and one super duo. So into this seed bead there, so into the seed bead that your thread is coming out of, into the seed bead next to it, and then out of the seed bead next to that. So it's like you're sewing through one, two, three seed beads in a row down around the thing. That's still a little ways off. And your point at which you need to make that exception may be different from mine. Like I still have some room here, so I'm going to do this. It may be halfway around, it may be three quarters of the way around. Um, the first time I did this, it was right at the very end of it that I needed to make my little adjustment. And so I want to show you what to look for when you do that. Hold 
on. I think I went into the wrong bead. No, I didn't. Okay, so this is this is about where it's at. See, it looks like this is two beads over. This is the bead that I went into and came out of. So for this, it is about halfway. So I didn't need to stop and start my video for this. So for this, what I'm going to do is instead of um, going two beads over from where I'm going, so, you know, one, two beads, I'm just going to go one bead over. Just one. And you only need to make this adjustment once for this to fit right. But now I can pick up my 111 my Super Duo, go into this guy right here, into this bead, and then skip over two more beads. So that's the bead I was coming out of, and then two more beads away from there. And that's just because there's just that shift diameter-wise, geometry, math nonsense. <laughs> and then you can just keep going. And I'm just going to not even worry about stopping and starting this. We're going to go all the way around together. So now I've got it coming out of this bead here. We'll go over two like this. So you want to, at the end of the day, you want to have added nine super duos around this ring. And so far I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so I need to add two more. That's gonna be pretty easy because I'm gonna pick up my last 11 -0, my super duo, I go into this 11 -0 here, into the 11 that I'm coming out of, and then two over. I'm going to be coming out of this bead that's right underneath that first super duo that I added. It's over here on that on the side of it. Actually, this was the first super duo that I went around, so I'm coming out of the bead right next to it right there. And this is the last one that I'm going to be adding a Super Duo to, but I already have both of the 11 O's that are going to make up that writing a weave unit around it. So I'm going to go up through this 11 O here, go up through it like that. Grab a super duo and then go down through this 11 0 here and back into that 11 0 that I was coming out of and then through a couple more if I want to just to tighten it up and secure it. And I'm just making sure that, that is out of the way. Yep. There you go. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tug, lay it down flat. And it is still very loosey-goosey here. So we're going to be going through these to tighten them up a little bit by traveling around here until we're coming up or out of a bead next to one of these horizontal 11 O's, the ones that are kind of sitting on the top a little bit. It's almost like a brick stitch, almost. I'm gonna go up through that one, like that. And then over here, and I can go either this way or this way. It doesn't really matter right now. But I'm going to go through this hole in the Super Duo that's closest to the center. Not the outer hole, the, the center hole. This is the hole that we've already gone through once. And I'm going to pick up two 11 O's. And you could switch to the other color or go ahead and stick with that same center color. I'm going to go ahead and stick with my same center color for this. And just go right through that same hole on the next Super Duo. And I'm going to fill in all of these spaces with two 11 O's 
all the way around. Just like this. And um, move things out of the way so that my thread doesn't get caught on them. At this point, you can like go ahead and weave in your tail or keep it out of the way. It doesn't matter, but I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way around and I'll meet you back here once I've got all of those two 11 O's. That's three. Why am I so bad at counting? <laughs> all right. So let's do, let's try that one again, actually, with two 11 O's. Yes, two 11 O's between each of these super duos. All right, so I've just added my last two 11 O's between these. I'm gonna go ahead and go through those next two that are right next to that super duo I'm going through. And then through my super duo only, that same hole that I went through before. Now I'm going to switch directions and I'm going to go back around my circle, but I'm going to go through the outer hole on these super duos. So I'm going to switch up and just go up through that next hole. I came out of this hole and I went into this hole to turn it around and come back. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick up a super duo, an 11 0 and a super duo. And I, you could keep using that same first color, but I'm gonna actually switch it up and plop my green color in between each of these because we're getting close to the edges of the flower and I just wanted to make it look a little bit like some of the leaves are poking through some of these flowers. So again, I'm coming out of this super duo and I've picked up a super duo, an 11 0, and a super duo. And then I'm going to go into the next super duo. Like this. And I'm going to continue that all the way around. A super duo, an 11 0, and a super duo. Boop, boop, boop. Try to go just through the one super duo, not through all of them. <laughs> You see how it kind of stacks them right up on top of them. That is exactly what you want. My thread is getting caught on my other super duos. All right, so I'm going to finish this, go all the way around. When we get to the other side, I'll meet you right back here. All right, friends, so we added all of those groups of three beads, the Super Duo, 11 and Super Duo, in between those Super Duos all the way across here. This is the last group that I added, and I came out through this one Super Duo. I'm going to go into the Super Duo next to it. It's one of the first ones that I added, if I, if I can get my needle in there anyway. And we're going to turn it around and go reverse direction again. So I'm coming out of the lower hole for that super duo. I'm going to go up through the upper hole of that same super duo. We're going to go in the other direction. Now with this part, we're going to be alternating between adding a gem duo and adding another super duo. And you can always tell as you're doing this which spot you're going to fill in with a super duo and which spot you're going to be filling in with a gem duo. And that is by looking for the seed bead that's between them. Like these two super duos, they do not have a seed bead between them. So I'm going to add a super duo there pick up that super duo and sew into the next one. 
And hold on, because I need to tighten up that thread a little bit, because it's just going everywhere. There we go. That's better. And that makes my little sunflower petal shape right there. And I'm going to be adding some sunflower leaves to the edges with these gem duos. And the gem duos have two sides. They have this flat side, and then they have this raised side on the other side. So if you lay your gem duos out so that the raised side is up and the flat side is down, and they're pointing lengthwise towards and away from you, then you can make sure that you are going through your gem duo in exactly the same way each time you pick one up. Um, because they've got a front and a back. And we also have a front and a back to this design with the cabochon. One side is flat and the other side is rounded. So this is the front. And so my thread is going to go from right to left across the front of this. So I want my needle to go through my gem duo through this bottom hole, if it's the closest that's towards me from right to left. And that way when I place it, it will be facing the correct direction. Now, if you are going in the other direction around this way, because like I said earlier, it didn't matter which direction you went. If you're going in the other direction, obviously you're going to want your needle to go through the other way. Just make sure that it's going in such a way that when it pops into place here, that rounded section or the rounded side is going to be facing the same direction as your um, rounded part of your cabochon. So that one had a seed bead, by the way. So that's why I knew to put my gem duo there. This one does not have a seed bead. So I'm going to pick up my super duo. And then this one has a seed bead. So I'm going to pick up a gem duo again going this is why you set them out going in that same direction so that it's facing the correct way. And I'm just going to add these all the way around until I get to the other side. All right, so I added all of my super duos and my gem duos all around the edge. And then I sewed through again one more time with my thread to kind of firm everything up, to tighten everything up. It's a little bit loose, but it's not super loose like it was before I tightened everything up and just uh, re, um, reinforced everything. You can, if it is still too floppy for you, you can um, use some diamond glaze to like firm it up. Um, or, and this is another option that you can do, you can pop up here to this top hole on these guys and pick up three 11 O's. You can use any colors you want. I'm gonna go ahead and use green and just sew three 11 O's between each of the diamond duos and super duos around the outside edge. And that'll just give it a little more firmness, a little more um, stability, just a little bit, especially those uh, gem duos to keep them from flopping around too much. And so you can definitely do that. It's not, um, I don't think going to ruin it. I don't think I need to do that for my earrings, but I'm definitely going to do that for the pendant that I'm making for my necklace. And so I'm going to set this aside for that. And like I said, we'll do the actual necklace. In another video, this was just to show you how to make the uh, the component for each of these, and those those three eleven O's fit very nicely there. All right, so from here I can follow my thread path down, burn it off tie it off with that other end and I'll be ready to go. For this one, this is the one that I'm going to be turning into my earrings. Don't worry, I'll do a second one. I'm 
coming up out of, I had already gone through and done that reinforcing stitching. So I'm going to just jump up from this hole that I'm coming out of on this gem duo and up here to the top like that. And I'm going to pick up my wire guardian. I'm just going to go through that right here at the top of this gem duo. So I went through one leg of the gem duo or the wire guardian. I'm going to go down through the other leg and I just pinched the top of it right here to make sure that the thread ends up in that channel. Sometimes it doesn't. And then you have to like readjust things. And I'm going to go back through my gem duo right here, the same one that I just went in and out of. I'm just going to reinforce this by going up through that leg of the wire guardian, up over the top, and down through the other leg. You could put a uh, probably a seed bead between them. Wouldn't go amiss, but I don't think it's super, super necessary right here. And then now that I've got this reinforced and it's going down on both sides, I can go back down to my gem duo through some of these other guys. And then I can do my thread path through the rest of this, find my other thread, tie it off, and burn off my ends. But now I've got a little loop right here that I can attach my ear wire to. right here. And then I've got a sunflower earring. And I love this. <laughs> Let me get this um, woven in, tied off, burned out, and then I'll get a second pair and I will show you what they look like. And here are my finished earrings all ready for me to wear. And I was not expecting to do another bead woven earring for my earrings everyday challenge, but I just, I had to make these and I am so obsessed with them. I love them so much. And I think that these would look amazing with some red super duos as poinsettias during Christmas time too. So I'm probably going to be doing that again <laughs> this Christmas. But in the meantime, here's some summertime sunflowers for y'all. Um, stay tuned if you want to see the necklace tutorial and the bracelet tutorial. Um, go ahead and hit the, hit the subscribe button and that way you'll maybe be notified um, when I upload it. And uh, if you like what you saw, hit the like button. And I hope to see you again later. Have a happy, wonderful weekend and happy beating friends.